Hello, everyone. This is Pastor Dave Stewart of Destiny Preparation, welcoming you to the program. This is Road to Destiny, brought to you by Destiny Preparation Church. We are still broadcasting in the Rochester area, as we will continue to do every weekend on television, Spectrum Channel 1301. We're here on uh, over the weekend in the city, RC TV, as well as in the suburbs. So if you're connecting up with us there, understand we will continue to share the Word of God on uh, that through those resources. Also on our Facebook page, if you're watching this on our Facebook page, this is a message to you to encourage you that we want to stay connected to you and that we are continuing to do the things that we have done to share the word, the ministry with you on a regular basis. Uh, as we go now, many of the things that we're doing are live streamed, but not live in person, uh, meaning that uh, our Sunday services right now are week to week in terms of whether we're allowing our congregation to come in or not. And so we'll be sharing that information, updating you on a regular basis as to where we stand and that's going to depend on where things stand in our community we know we're in a pandemic time and things are on the rise again but we will have our live stream services in either case sunday mornings wednesday bible study is live stream our our saturday evening program conversations and all the other things that we post up and share up with you i pray this is a blessing to you and i pray if it blesses you you'll help share it with somebody else because this is not a time to be alone there are so so many people right now who need an inspiration, need encouragement, need a spiritual connection. If this is you and you're out there, I want you to know wherever you are, it's an amazing thing right now because distance doesn't matter nearly as much. If you can't drive down the street and be at the church, you can connect up with us on the internet from throughout the country and people are doing it throughout the world. And so feel free to share with someone else, with your friends, with your neighbors, with people on Facebook, and we're now also on Instagram as well, uh, that need to connect up. You can call, call and contact us. You can call us. You can email us. You can uh, connect up through Messenger. Many, many people from out the country right now are sending us messages on Messenger, and we are responding back. And so I encourage you to share the ministry, be a part of it, and bless, and bless us and encourage us by helping to share with others. It is such a blessing, and we all need each other right now. do want to let you know that we will be having a Christmas su Sunday service along with our regular regular services every Sunday live stream at 11.30 a.m. We also will be having a New Year's Eve program that will be aired New Year's Eve night. And so there will be something to connect you up and help you to get ready to go into the new year. And I pray that you'll uh, be a part of that as well. So let me take you into the word of God now. I'm taking you to something to encourage you because I know we're going through a lot. This talks about the comfort of God. It's called still waters. The Lord will protect you. He will keep you beside the still waters. I pray this blesses you. And I pray again that you'll help bless somebody else. Look forward to hearing from you real soon. God bless you. I want to offer you a word of encouragement today. And so I want to take you to the word in a passage that I believe you're very familiar with. Psalm 23. Anybody familiar with Psalm 23? Amen. Amen. You can turn there if you will. Some of you have it memorized. Some of you have known it from a child. I just want to share these first three verses that come from the book of Psalm chapter 23, verses 1 through 3. It says, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. This is a powerful passage of scripture. We've read this and, and preached from this uh, chapter many, many times over the years. But I want to focus on uh, just this first part right now and something that I believe the Lord is sharing uh, with us. I actually woke up the other night. I can't remember which night it was, maybe Thursday night, just before all the announcements started coming out about the president. And I woke up that night, half in and half out, thinking that I don't remember. Something's wrong and I need to pray. And when I began to pray, half asleep, laying in my bed, these are the words that came out. And that's not typical for me. Usually if I'm going to pray, I'm going to pray something. I'm going to say something, whatever's on my mind. But these were the words that poured out of my heart at that time. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. And I began to meditate on that passage for the past few days. 
And I believe there are some words in here of comfort to us to consider. This is a passage. This is a chapter of comfort. This is a psalm of encouragement. David was writing out his experience in a way that it was encouraging, I believe, first to his own soul and then to others that may have been around. We may be familiar with the fact that David was a shepherd boy in his, young, in his youth. And this, I believe, was written many, many years later where he was uh, referring back to those memories, those thoughts of a time when he was a shepherd. And understanding the concept and responsibilities of a shepherd, he begins to write out this in such a way as evaluating or analyzing, analogizing God as his shepherd. Understanding how he treated his sheep and how he watched for them and kept them, he began to put that analogy towards God and said that the Lord is my shepherd. Because of him, I shall not want or I shall not have any need that shall not be met. In verse Two, he says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. And there are two particular things that really step out in my mind in this passage today. This first element, he maketh me. And we need to understand what this means because he's not forcing. We think of making many times as being forces. He forces me. God is not forcing us into green pastures. But when you look at this in other uh, versions of the Bible, it says things like he causes me or he takes me to green pastures. In other words, what I believe this refers to in terms of making meaning that he puts me in a place of green pastures. God puts us where the green pastures are. He puts us in a place that is healthy for us, a place that will nurture us. He just said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, I shall have no need. So God puts us in a place where our needs are met. Amen. I don't know about you, but that's comforting to me. It goes on to say that he leadeth me beside the still waters. And this still waters concept is the thing that really caught me that night. Still waters. Why? What about still waters, God? Why are you leading us there? What is unique about still waters? Still waters represent waters that are calm, waters that are Restful. They're not uh, ravaging. They're not running. They're calm waters, and they are peaceful or restful water. This is a peaceful or restful place. It is a comfortable and a safe place. In contrast to that, you need to understand the, the concept, idea of a sheep. If you took a sheep near ravaging waters and they were thirsty and they went to the water to drink, they don't necessarily have the type of feet or the type of legs to keep themselves stable if the water is running heavy. So they would go into a place of danger because their natural thought is, I need water. But in doing so, they would go into a place that would be hazardous to the health and potentially kill them. So God doesn't put us in a place of hazardous waters. He feeds us and he nurtures us and he knows exactly the type of place that we need. So he puts us in a place of green pastures and leads us beside the still waters. You know anything about rivers, you'll know that as you follow them down, there are areas where they get more narrow and areas where they get more broad. And in the more narrow areas, the water tends to be more intense. And so in the same river, you can have areas that are intense and you can have areas that are calm. And so when God leads us, he leads us away from those things which are treacherous and puts us in a place of still or calm waters. What I want you to understand is that in this scripture, what he's talking about is putting us in a place that is protected, safe, and peaceful. How many of you want to be in a place that's protected, safe, and peaceful. The Lord is my shepherd, and he will make me to lie down in green pastures and lead me beside the still water. So we want the Lord to put us, to guide us into a place that's going to be peaceful. How many of you know we need peace right now? Amen. We need to have peace in the midst of. Amen. That's what I want to talk to you about today. Amen. Being in peace in the midst of, because how many of you know there's a lot of non-peaceful things going on right now? 
There's a lot of treacherous things that are going on right now. There's a lot of name calling. There's a lot of confusion. There's a lot of anger and bitterness, and you can see it raging up. We've been saying even over the past couple of weeks that some of these protests, amen, have gotten to the point where it looks like we're on the verge of a civil type of war. I mean, literally, with people coming up with guns and machine guns on both sides of the line. The police somewhere in between, and they've got their guns, and then these people have their guns, and these have theirs. And all it would take was just one hit of the wrong trigger at the wrong time to start a man shooting across the lines, and everybody is in the midst of it. We're at a brink, we're at an area at an edge of a, of a brink of something very, very dangerous. We've all been stressed living in our homes and, and, and in, in our quiet places or in our isolated places, daring sometimes or scared sometimes to go into the stores or, you know, you get used to going to certain stores, maybe like Wegmans, but every time you got to go in a new store, you don't know, you know, what's going on in there, how people treat it in there. If you dare you go into another city and not know how those people are going to react there. Amen. Everything has you on watch. Amen. You're watching over your children. You're watching over your family. You don't know what's coming in the door. Where you been? Who, who you been with? Anybody know what I'm talking about? It, is, it has been a not very peaceful place that we're living in. But when the Bible, we go back to the scripture, we're reminded that as he's leading them into this place of green pastures and still waters, it's not too far from here that there's a valley. And the valley that is described is the valley of the shadow of death. And so not too far from the place where they are. They're in a place where they are, they are protected right now because not too far from them is death. I dare think and consider that this particular spot that, that God has identified for them is a spot of protection and safety because all around them there are things that would desire to kill them. When you think about sheep, amen, that's the biggest issue they have is if you take them out into the wild, into a wilderness, they, are, they, 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 are, they don't have the power to defeat anything. So any predator can come against them. So all around them are things that are desiring to devour them. But yet God has found this place which has green pastures and still waters for them. Amen. So I want you to understand that God will find a place for you in the midst of confusion and frustration and fears and worries and attacks. God can still find a place for you to have peace in the midst of it. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? What I'm trying to tell you is that in the midst of all the things that we're experiencing, all the things that we're seeing, all the attacks of people around us, all the threats around you today, perhaps even outside your door, outside of your window, not knowing what your neighbors are going to do, not knowing what's going to happen at your job, in the midst of all the things that are coming at you, coming in your television set, into your house, talking things that make you afraid and worried and not knowing what's coming next, amen, coming on your phone and in your social media feeds, in the midst of all that, God can find you a peaceful place. How many of you believe God's got a peaceful place for you? Amen. Hallelujah. We're literally surrounded by things right now, this year more than ever, that are coming at us from the left and from the right and from the front and from the back. You're looking every which way, every direction, amen, you can. You're watching for who's doing what. We don't even know who's looking at attacking the United States in our moments of vulnerability. Not only is it that Trump, amen, has this virus, but the president of the United States is in a situation that he could be highly vulnerable over the next several weeks and several days. And who knows who wants to take advantage of a situation like that? But God can find us a peaceful place, even in the midst of all the difficulties that are going on. There's a word that we use sometimes called oasis. And the word oasis, by definition, describes a fertile spot in the desert. Hmm. In the desert, it describes a place where water is found. In the desert. How many of you realize that it's not natural to find water in the desert? A peaceful place, an oasis is a place that somehow, in the midst of all of the, the, the loss, in the midst of the heat and the dryness and the barrenness that's all around you, everywhere that you turn, there is this one place in the midst of it that still is providing fertile ground and water to you. 
Amen. And God is able to provide us that kind of a place. A shepherd has to know where to find an oasis in the midst of the desert. How many of you realize that there's, there are shepherds that, that, that raise, up, raise up sheep in the, in the desert? And they have to know where to go in the midst of that barren land to find the place to provide for their sheep. Where do you find grass in the midst of a desert? Where do you find water and springs in the midst of the desert? The shepherd has to know where to take them, even though the surroundings may be working against them. And so the shepherd puts his sheep in a safe place in the midst of whatever the environment is that they're dealing with. Now, I want you to get this because oftentimes we think of an oasis as being an imaginary place. You see it in the movies as this imagine somebody's having this vision and dream, and they, they think this, and no, we're not talking about imaginary. I'm talking about a real place in the midst of a real barren area. God is able to find a real place for you, not just, not just an imagine. I'm not just wishful thinking that God is going to keep me and bring me through it. I'm not just hoping for this. God can find you a place in the midst of your darkest day, your darkest hour, your darkest situation. No matter how many enemies are coming up against you, no matter how many storms are raging, God knows how to find a peaceful place in the midst of your situation. How many of you believe it today? Amen. And he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to find it. If he can't find it, he'll create it. How many of you believe God can create your peaceful place right now? Listen to the words of Isaiah chapter forty-nine. Amen. Nineteen and twenty. It says, "I will even make a way in the wilderness." And listen, rivers in the desert. God is saying it for you right now. The word speaks to you. Listen to this, verse 20. He says, the beasts of the field shall honor me and dragons and owls. Listen, all these predatory animals, the beasts, the dragons, the owls, all those that should be having their way with you, he says they're going to honor him. Listen, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people my chosen. How many of you know that God can take care of you in the midst of your desert? Amen. Listen, you may not see it there right now. You may not understand it, but God will create it if that's what it takes. He'll bring rivers in the midst of your desert. He will supply for you whatever you need. You might be worried about your job. You might be worried about, amen, where things are coming from. You might be worried about who's supporting you and who's keeping you, but as long as God's got you, He'll create whatever you need to go through what you're going through. How many of you believe that God will keep you through it all? Hallelujah. God will give you peace. Amen. He will give you peace in the midst of it. Everything that you're going through, everything that you're doing, everything that's going on in your life, God can give you peace. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, there's no storm so great. There's no problem so great. There's no challenge so difficult that God cannot give you peace in the midst of your storm. He said he'll do it. He'll keep you. Amen. In the book of Psalms, we're in 23, verse 3, he says, he restoreth my soul. Hallelujah. Amen. I may have been down. I may have been frustrated by what I saw. I may have been confused by what was happening. But in the midst of my desert, God will restore my soul. He'll replenish me with strength. He'll give me water. Amen. And restore my soul. I might have been tired and weary by everything that was going on. But thank God for the God that will restore my soul. How many of you are glad God will keep you in the midst of your desert today? Hallelujah. I'm glad, hallelujah, for the replenishing power of God in my life. Amen. I might have it, not have it of myself. My cupboards might be bare. My, 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 my shelves might be dry. But when I realize that God is on my side, he will supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. And his riches has a river that will run through my desert. Hallelujah. I'm glad to know he can restore my soul. Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 26 and verse 3. He says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. How many of you know that God can keep you in perfect peace? 
no matter what it looks like, no matter what's coming up against you. Amen. Oh, somebody, amen, it thinks we might need an oasis, but God won't give you, amen, just an imaginary thing. God will give you the real thing in the midst of what you're going through. I'll keep you in perfect peace. Sometimes we feel like in order to have peace, we have to ignore the reality of what's going on. Sometimes we have to pretend like, oh, no, it's not there. I'm okay. Everything is fine. Sometimes everything's not fine. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Sometimes there are tears that are coming down at night. Sometimes people are trying to hurt you. Sometimes things are, are pulling at you from the inside out. Amen. There's a reality to what I'm going through. But he says, I'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me. The situation might not change, but as long as I can see God in the midst of it. Hallelujah. As long as I can keep just that little bit open and see God is still there, no matter what's coming from behind, what's coming from the side, what's coming from above, I'll keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me. He says, because he trusteth in thee. How many of you trust in the Lord today? Listen, no matter what you're going through, you got to keep trusting in the Lord. No matter what it seems like, you keep trusting in the Lord. No matter how long it's been, this has been a long haul. Some of us have gone down a long road. It seems like we've been fighting and holding on for a long time. And some of us feel like it's been long enough or perhaps too long. But let me tell you, as long as you keep trusting in him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. Somebody can look at you and wonder, what's going on? How, how are you still smiling <laughs> with, with all the things that have been happening in your life? How is it you are still, amen, stepping up? How is it you are still coming back and forth every day, every day? How are you being so faithful to things that are hurting you? How are you still hanging in there with, things, with people that are lying on you? How are you still standing when everybody's telling you you should give up and quit and just run away? But here you are because you have perfect peace, not just just partial peace but perfect peace why because my mind is still on God my mind is still on him I know that he's a keeper I know that he'll never forsake me I know that he'll never leave me my mind is still on God yes I see the trouble on every hand yes I see the problems coming at me yes I see what they're trying to do to me but my mind is still on God and somebody say I'm still trusting him say I'm still trusting him I'm still trusting him through everything that's going on hallelujah Jesus taught, it what it taught us what it was to have perfect peace in the midst of the storm. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Amen. He was in the midst of the boat. Amen. In the bottom of the boat sleeping when the storm began to rise up and the winds began to blow and the waves, hallelujah, began to move and, and the boat had to move and it couldn't have been but so comfortable sleeping in that boat. But in the midst of everything that's going on, here's Jesus in the bottom of the boat. Amen. Sleeping restfully. Why? Because he knows the end of the story. <laughs> he knows no matter how hard that boat shakes, there's nothing that's taking him down because that's not his time yet. And he knows no matter how big the lightning bolts may come, amen, there's no worry for him because God's got it under control. Amen. All the others on the boat could only see what they saw in front of them. And so they went running down to the bottom saying, Master, don't you know, don't you care that we're about to perish here? Amen. They were afraid for what they saw, but Jesus knew how to have peace in the midst of the storm listen just because the storm is real doesn't mean you have can't be at peace I said, just because what's happening to you is real doesn't mean that some people feel like, no, how can I have peace? I mean, I'm going through all this. I have this pain. I have this problem. But just because the storm is real does not mean you can't still have peace. Somebody ought to claim your peace right now in the midst of the storm. Amen. The storm is raging, but I've still got peace. The wind is blowing, but I still declare peace. Amen. Amen. Trouble is still coming, but I claim my peace right now in the midst of the storm. Come on, somebody give God a praise for your peace right now. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm here to tell you that God can give you rest. 
in the midst of your storm. God can give you comfort in the midst of your storm. God can keep you in the midst of your storm. Amen. No matter what you're going through. Listen, one more verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Amen. Verse 8 and 9. Amen. They said, we are troubled on every side, but yet, amen, not in distress. Hallelujah. We're perplexed. Amen. But not in despair. Amen. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. I want you to understand what's happening there. Every time there's a reality in action on them, there's a mindset that refuses to let go. Come on, somebody. Every time something comes from the left or for the right, there's something in their heart that refuses, amen, to give in to the attacks that are coming. There's trouble on every side. You can bring trouble every direction you want, but down on the inside, I refuse to be distressed about it. You can't make me be afraid. You can't make me worry about this. You can't make me run and hide. There's trouble, but I'm not distressed. Amen. We're perplexed by all the things that are happening, but I'm not in despair today. I still got the joy of the Lord on the inside. I still got perfect peace on the inside. No matter what comes against me, the Lord is still on my side. My mind is still on him. I still trust him to take me through it. How many believe that God can keep you in the midst of your storm today? How many of you believe that God will hold on to you if you hold on to him? No matter what comes, the Lord is on your side. No matter what comes against you, God will keep you. I said God will keep you. 